Friends, be seated, please. What are you looking for? Two disciples who have been following John in the desert see Jesus and walk away from John and start following Jesus. And I think it's interesting that Jesus doesn't start with a lecture. He doesn't sit them down and say, well, here's the things that being a disciple of me involves. You need to believe this. You need to do this other thing. I strongly recommend that you engage in a particular spiritual practice. I think you may need to make sure that you attend church every Sunday. By the way, I've got a list of uh, four spiritual laws that you should probably consider. Maybe I've got a track for you. He doesn't do any of those things. He asks a question. Jesus begins his relationship with those who follow him with a question. What are you looking for? Our translation makes it sound a little bit, I think, generic. The better translation would be something like, what do you need? Jesus starts his relationship with this set of men that are going to follow him through thick and thin and sometimes not always follow him particularly well with a question. What do you need? What stirs you? What do you need in your life now? So what do you need? Not necessarily from this church or from... What do you need? What's that thing that popped into your head that maybe you don't really want to say aloud? That thing that you're not quite sure you're ready to confront. Or maybe that thing you know that you need and you haven't gotten. And so it's too hard to think about it again. And how does that feel? What is the hope and the grief that goes with naming your need? That's how our relationship with the one who is God begins. Not what do you do, now, what do you believe? What do you need? That is the question that Jesus asks every one of us. What do you need? And their response is interesting. It seems a little strange to us. Where are you staying? What? That's weird. Except that in a culture where students follow teachers and attach themselves to teachers and engage in a life together with their teachers, that question is really, where do we go to be with you? That's really what that tr question is about. This is how teachers and philosophers of the ancient world shared the good news that they had to share by hanging out with, spending time with, living together, eating together, traveling together. Sometimes they traveled out in deserts and sometimes they hang, hung out at the, at the square in the middle of Athens. But that's how Teaching works. It's not about conveying information primarily. It's about a relationship. Where are you staying? Where do we go to be with you? Where do we go to get in your space? To be in that space, to talk, to eat together. 
We all know that the kinds of conversations we have over food are very different than the kinds of conversations we have at a bus stop or standing together even, even in the parish hall. That moment when we sit down to eat together, you know, something breaks open. I was always taught, I'm a, I was a, I am still kind of a interest, I have an interest in politics, and I was always taught that it doesn't really matter if the president or the prime minister of Israel shakes the hand of the president or the prime minister of whatever Palestinian organization is. It doesn't matter. Because that culturally doesn't mean a whole lot. Eating together means something. There is something about being in people's life and eating with and sharing the day-to-day -day that you learn. Not a bunch of ideas, but what it means to live. What it means to live well. So Jesus says, what do you need? And they say, how do we spend time around you? Where do we go to be around you? And Jesus says to them, come and see. Come and see. Again, no formula, no elaborate conversation, no saying the right things to get the person to engage and to show up. Just come and see. Come and see what I'm about. Come and see what my life is about. That is the invitation to all of us. Come and see. Come and see what it is like to be with God. Come and see what it's like to be with God in this place and in this community. It's different than other communities. And I like this one for X, Y, or Z reasons. You have to fill that in. But come and see. Episcopalians, friends, we have an allergy to evangelism. We hate it. We're like, oh, I don't talk about Jesus. And I think a part of that is we don't talk about Jesus because a lot of things done in Jesus' name right now in our culture and society are things that we do not agree with. We do not like them. We actively object to them. And so our tendency is to say, well, let's just not talk about Jesus. And by doing that, we just gave Jesus to the people who I think shouldn't be talking about Jesus. We just handed our Jesus over to a group of people who say things about Jesus that horrify me. And yet, y'all are here because there's something about Jesus and there's something about being together in the name of Jesus that just sticks, it hooks into you. I suspect that many of us have had opportunities to not be at the church, to not be a part of a community. Perhaps because of time and energy, perhaps because we have had some experiences that were like, I do not, I mean, these people, crazy, hurtful, damaging. I don't want to be there. But there's something that draws us back. Come and see. There's something about Jesus that we just can't quite let go of, even when we try hard. I think we should be bold about Jesus. I don't think Jesus is who the 500 Club says Jesus is. I don't think Jesus and focus on the family are actually all that buddy-buddy. And a part of that is because I know that I, someone who is not welcome in a lot of those groups, I am absolutely welcomed by Jesus. I don't, I don't ever doubt that. I don't know why I don't doubt it, but I don't. 
there is something about that relationship that I can't let go of, I don't want to let go of, that meets a need that I have that I cannot always articulate. For me, that need takes a particular shape. I love the Eucharist. I love liturgy and ritual. I love the richness of singing together. Whether we do it well or not is kind of not the point for me. I like the movement of this space. I like the way that we kind of practice what it is to be in relationship together at this time on a Sunday morning. That's why I'm not a Quaker, to be honest. I've tried to be a Quaker. <laughs> really like Quaker politics, really like Quaker spirituality, really don't like Quaker liturgy. And I can't help it. There's nothing, other people love that. I love this. I am here in this church and in this place because I love it. Because it meets a need that I cannot find met in other places. If this place doesn't meet a need for you, don't be here. Go be where your need will be met. Because the question that Jesus is asking every one of you is, what do you need? And then come and see. Come and see. And invite that friend to come and see. Come and see so that your need can be met by God, by one another, in a way that maybe we can express or maybe we can't. But come and see. Amen.